Today we're going to talk about data link layer and some concept in uh, local area network. Um, we have talked about layer four, uh, layer seven, layer four, and layer three. And currently, data link layer is at layer two. Um, for layer seven, uh, we are talking about send message from one process to the other process. And at layer four, we need a port number to specify which process uh, the operating system will deliver the message to, right? And at layer three, uh, we, we introduce IP addresses. So uh, for the communication peers, they have to uh, they have to have um, an IP address so that we know how to route the packet from the source IP address to the um, destination IP address. Uh, but in there too, uh, the communication um, between two hosts is to rely on uh, layer two um, interfaces. We are talking about um, network interface card, NIC, NIC. And uh, those network interface card, um, we, of course, we have several different uh, technology at layer two. For example, uh, we can send um, signals from one uh, interface car to the other one by using, uh, for example, a copper wire, uh, a wireless signal um, via uh, fiber or a satellite. There are several different uh, layer two technology that can help us to send signal from one interface to an other interfaces. So um, let's take a look at the uh, chapter six, okay? Um, in this chapter, we're going to talk about um, service layer at data link layer, okay? And um, in layer four, uh, as we mentioned before, we have TCP and UDP. So uh, TCP provide um, reliable data transfer services to the layer seven applications, and the UDP does not provide any um, functionality, any services to the up layer. And at layer three, Currently, uh, we, we only have IP protocols, so um, we, we rely on packet switch technology techniques to uh, rely, relay or forward or route packet from one host to host to the next router, to the next router, and so on and so forth. So um, in IP layer, we, we don't provide, uh, IP layer does not provide any guarantee because uh, we use packet switch, so uh, the, the, the diagram may um, maybe dropped it because uh, the, the buffer may may may, may fool right so um, of course there are some other uh, layer three technology but we don't use them uh, right now so we have only IP IP, IP um, protocol uh, but at, at layer two um, actually we have several um, technologies that can transfer uh, a frame from one interface card to, any, to the other. But uh, of course, there are several, dif uh, several different protocols. They may um, provide different uh, services. For example, right here, uh, we have error detection and correction. Some um, layer two protocol, they provide uh, error detection functionality. So um, if a friend, if a layer two friend send from one card to the other card and uh, the receiving interface card uh, may have the capability to detect error. And some other layer two protocols, they may have uh, the receiving <clears throat> interface may have the capability of uh, error cor correction. It's really depend on what kind of um, layer two device you have. And uh, it depends on their design scenario uh, to provide or not to provide um, such kind of functionality. Okay. And uh, in layer two, um, we have a problem called uh, multiple access because, um, for example, in a Wi-Fi environment, okay, uh, a Wi-Fi interface card may uh, send signal by using uh, by using um, electromagnetic signal, right? But um, as we mentioned before, it is a signal that can propagate uh, in in a space, right? So um, all the other interface card in the uh, nearby, they can sense, they can uh, read, they can uh, receive uh, a signal.
by a single, uh, by by, uh, send sending by a interface card. So uh, basically, uh, in the LAN, in the local area network, no matter it is Wi-Fi or it is um, uh, wild wired Ethernet, um, we, we will describe those uh, channels are broadcast channels because all the other all the interfaces in this um, LAN, okay, and in, in this subnet can receive the layer two signal. Okay, so that's that's what we call those uh, interface card. They are they share a broadcast channel. So everyone, every card, each card can receive and send messages, uh, send frames, send signals uh, to all the other uh, interface card. And we call it a multiple access because uh, multiple interface spaces card want to access the channel, can access the channel. So we, we use the word multiple access. We will talk about some uh, concept later, okay? So uh, the other thing is um, link layer at addressing. Um, in, and there, Four, in a host that we use the port number to specify which um, uh, process is associated with the the port, right? And uh, at each host, we use the IP address to to uniquely identify different hosts on the internet, right? But um, in the LAN, uh, for different interface interface card, we use a link layer address or called MAC address or called physical address. We use this address to specify different interface card in the LAN. And we're going to do some, um, some uh, important uh, concept of the uh, link layer addressing. And uh, we will talk about Ethernet, okay, uh, in this chapter. And uh, of course, Ethernet is one of the layer two protocol. And Wi-Fi is also a dead link layer protocol. But we will introduce Wi-Fi and uh, mobile network uh, ne in, in next chapter. Okay, so uh, then here. So um, the terminology we use here, uh, we have nodes, we have links in the subnet. So basically a host, or no matter it's a, a PC, it is a, a laptop, it's a, your, your iPad or something, or the core network, the, the device in the core network, of course, routers, they both, they are both called nodes, okay? And the communication channels that can uh, connect with adjacent nodes along communication path is called links. So um, no matter this link is wired or wireless, they're, they're both called links, okay? And in 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 chapter uh, in in first chapter we we have introduced uh, there are several different um, terminologies in at each layer at layer two it's frame right right so frame it uh, has to encapsulate the upper layer layer three diagram and the diagram encapsulate layer four segment and layer four segment encapsulates uh, layer seven message so uh, make sure you understand those terminologies. And at the right hand side, uh, we can see that, uh, for example, we have a source, we have the destination. So in order to um, do the routing, so we have uh, several different hops to uh, send the packet from the source to, for example, the first router, to the second, the third, and the fourth, and to the uh, final, to the final subnet. And uh, in it, in this example, uh, I think the 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 final subnet is a mobile network, so it uses a, a tower to send signal from the tower to your mobile phone so uh, basically uh, your your entire path okay of course we, we have introduced how to do uh, routing by using uh, Dijkstra's algorithm and the Bellman force algorithm um, they are uh, OSPF protocol and uh, BG, BGP protocol to to uh, determine such kind of path but um, when you send a, a frame from one interface card to, to the other one, we need layer two, okay? So uh, layer three is built on the top of uh, layer two. We need a lot of different layer two te technology so that we can do one hop from one um, interface card to the other one. And the router will do routing, right? And we then jump to a hop to the next router and hop to the next router. But when we do such kind of hopping, um, different layer two technology may be may involved. Okay, 
So uh, data link layer has a uh, responsibility of transferring diagram from one node to uh, physically adjacent node over a link. Okay. So uh, the next one is the services provided by link layer, and uh, you can see at the right uh, top right side. Okay, I, I draw a few right here. So layer three diagram is encapsulated by the layer two headers and some protocol. Some layer two protocol they do have. Layer two trailer. Okay, it's a little bit different from what we have taught in uh, TCP or UDP. In TCP and UDP, we have only uh, headers, but uh, some layer two protocols they have headers and they have uh, trailers, so they encapsulate the layer three diagram. So uh, I think the most important things in the layer two header is the layer two address, or what we call MAC address. And in layer three, the most important field should be. Uh, source I, uh, source IP address, destination IP address. Okay, it's very similar. And uh, uh, for the services provided by layer uh, link layer, uh, the first things is the framing. Okay, so um, layer two protocol needs to encapsulate the diagram into frame, adding headers, adding traders, and uh, channel says it's if shared media. Uh, most of the time, the media are shared between different uh, interface card and the subnet. So uh, those sub those interface can need to um, coordinate with each other to come up um, a protocol to specify which which interface can transmit and others should not uh, interfere with uh, inter should not interfere interfering the uh, the the interface card that is currently transmitting some uh, signal in, in the subnet. So they have to uh, coordinate with each other, or they have to run a distributed distributed algorithm, a protocol, to decide to determine which one of the uh, interface should send the packet or should not send the packet, uh, should should send the frame or should not send the frame. Okay, so that is what we call uh, multiple access. Okay, and for each uh, interface card, we have a MAC address and frame headers to identify the, the source uh, interface card, the destination interface card. So we use a source, we, we usually we, we call it source MAC address or destination MAC address. Okay, so, um, and again, um, reliability is one of the functionality that can provide it or not provided by the link layer. So, uh, um, some of the um, layer two protocol, okay, depend on what kind of uh, physical media they use, okay. Some of the layer two protocol they have, uh, of course, depend on the the physical layer media. Some medium they they by nature they have a very very small or uh, little um, error rate. So uh, at layer two. It is not necessary to do error detection or error correction, but for some other um, physical layer, for example, uh, Wi-Fi, okay, uh, some of uh, the the layer two should design some uh, mechanism to deal with the <clears throat> high error rate problem. So it's really depend on the underlying uh, physical layer, the media they use, and you have to uh, design corresponding. Uh, layer two uh, services, reliable services, based on the on the layer um, physical media. Okay, so uh, right here, uh, for example, right here, wireless has high high error rate. So uh, on a wireless link, you have to your your layer two, your wireless layer two protocol need to deal with such kind of high layer high error rates. But for fiber, fiber, fiber is a, a very Low error, error uh, rate links. So it's corresponding layer two protocol. They may not have to uh, design complex uh, error detection or error correction mechanism. Okay. So again, right here, um, of course, some other services, for example, uh, flow control. Uh, we have talked about flow control at uh, layer four when we talk about TCP, uh, ascending, uh, ascending. We say ascending um, socket. Okay, it should 
uh, and the receiving socket, they should come up a mechanism so that the sending, uh, the sending socket will not send too many, too fast, to uh, too many too many packet or too fast too fast, uh, packet to the, the destination socket because the destination socket may have limited, um, buffer to receive uh, the segments, and it's it's really uh, it's very similar right here. And the interface card, the receiving interface card may have limited capability, so the sending interface card may not may uh, should not send too fast. I mean the the frame. So uh, the pacing between adjacent sending and the receiving node, uh, maybe layer two protocol they have to define certain uh, flow control mechanism at layer two so that the interface card can. Uh, smoothly receive the, the frames by uh, sending by the sending uh, nodes okay and uh, we have error de detection and error correction so uh, errors caused by uh, noise okay the noise can be caused by uh, for example um, if you send a wi-fi signal um, basically, it use a certain channel, right? But basically, um, your microwave uses the same um, channel. So, uh, microwave may be may be a noise uh, to interfere with your uh, Wi-Fi signal. So, um, Wi-Fi need to uh, design certain mecha mechanism to do error detections. Um, right here, uh, we have some uh, example right here. Receiver can detect errors uh, and maybe uh, for some layer to uh, protocol it will uh, signal the sender to uh, perform retransmission or the receiver at uh, layer 2 may drop the frame uh, it's really depend on uh, different uh, layer 2 protocol okay and for the error correction receiver can identify which bit and is incorrect and try to correct the bit errors without retransmission. So it's um, needs some it needs some help of the uh, algorithm to help the receiver can do such kind of uh, error correction. So we will, we will talk about uh, two different algorithms to um, correct the error bit. Okay, and uh, next one is uh, duplex. Um, if A can transmit um, a frame to B and B can transmit a frame to A, we will call it duplex. But um, if they can A and B can send frames simultaneously, we will call it uh, full duplex. But um, for some scenario, sometimes, okay, uh, A can send frames to B and B can send frames to A. So, uh, but they cannot do it at the same time. Uh, B has to wait until A uh, send its frame and receive the frame by B, and then B can send uh, the frame back to A. We will call it half duplex. So um, it's depend. Of course, it depends on the, the underlying uh, media, physical media. Uh, some media, uh, some physical media support for duplex, and some other do not. Okay. Um, of course, those services, uh, we'll talk about Wi-Fi and the Ethernet, and we'll talk about which service they can provide uh, uh, later, okay? So basically, uh, data link layer is implemented in every network interface card, or what we oh, oh, we call uh, adapter, okay? So uh, we have Ethernet, we have Wi-Fi card, uh, and they, can, they, they will be attached to to your motherboard, right? So uh, we can receive uh, frames from the other interface card. Um, usually, uh, to implement the protocols of their two, um, operating systems should uh, need, need to help. So uh, some of the implementation is at the operating system, and some are at the inter interface card, at its uh, firmware, and some are implemented in on the chip, so it is hardware. So uh, the third, uh, the fourth uh, bullet says it, it is a combination of hardware, software, and uh, firmware. But actually, we would not talk about how we implement those uh, data link layer. We will only talk about how they work and what is the concept of um, link layer and some algorithms later. Okay. 
So uh, left hand side, I, I think left hand side should be uh, the sending uh, side, the right hand side is the receiving side. And the sending side, um, after uh, an IP, tag, IP diagram has been uh, created, it will be sent to the underlying layer two. And of course, the layer two programs will encapsulate the, the diagram into a frame. And uh, by building the frame, uh, some error tracking bits, some reliable data transfer mechanism, some flow control mechanism should be uh, considered. To, should be considered in, in in at the sending side. Okay. So after uh, the network interface card send the signal from the sending side, the receiving side will receive the signal from uh, by using antenna, right? The antenna will uh, and will receive the signals, and then the hardware will decode the signals to bits, a lot of bits. So uh, we'll get we'll get a frame. So uh, a frame at the receiving side, uh, it looks for arrows, reliable data transfer, mechanism, flow control, etc. Try to check if the frame is correct or not. So after those examination, the, uh, the, the, the frame will be extracted again and uh, the, the, the diagram. Okay, we will get the diagram and pass the diagram to uh, IP uh, to the operating system, and, and their three will handle the the rest of the things like um, routing or forwarding or or um, some uh, their three um, algorithms checking. Okay, so uh, we will talk about how uh, error detection is achieved by using some um, algorithms. So uh, it's very similar to the uh, the checksum mechanism we introduced in uh, at layer four. So uh, let's take a look at this one. Uh, left hand side is source. Okay, we have a sending side, and the the, uh, the right hand side is the de destination receiving side. Okay, so uh, if we get we get a diagram. Okay, so the diagram, the size of the diagram is uh, d d bits. Okay, d bits. Um, to perform error detection, we need to um, add some redundant. Um, bits that can help the receiver to do to check against, right? So it's very similar to checksum. Uh, in, and therefore, the checksum is uh, uh, is done by some uh, addition uh, operation, right? Okay, you, you can go back to the the chapter uh, layer four to check. How checksum is uh, compute, okay, and uh, um, it's very similar here. We have to do some mechan uh, do some algorithm or do some uh, mathematic um, operation to get EDC. EDC stands for error detection uh, code or error detection and correction bits, okay. So I uh, will compute the EDC. We have two, several different ways to compute the EDC. We'll, we'll show you later, okay. So you you would. You have to concatenate the EDC to the original uh, diagram and send it to the um, send it to the uh, the the network, right? So let's assume the link is a bit arrow prone link, okay? Mm -hmm. So after a receiver receives those thing signal, D becomes D prime and EDC becomes D uh, EDC prime. So it is not necessary. That d equals to d prime and edc equals to edc prime because there might be some errors in the link, right? So we have to compute again by using the same algorithm used by the sender. So we compute the edc again. See if the edc is e the, the computed edc is is exactly the same as edc prime. If they're the same, then we have some confidence that the d prime is exactly as the same as d. So there's some mathematics. There's simply just some mathematics. Okay. So uh, one of the way to uh, to calculate the EDC is uh, called parity checking. So the first uh, we'd like to introduce is single bit parity. Okay, single bit parity. So uh, let's take a look at uh, this one. The single bit parity is a very simple uh, mechanism. Okay. So uh, uh, take take a look at this example. We have d bits. Uh, right here, right? The bits right here. Okay, the, we need to add an additional bit, a parity bit, at the end of these d bits. Okay, so the idea is that um, we count 
how many ones in this digit. Okay, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we have nine bits in D bits. Now we have nine ones in this D bits, right? The idea is that this mechanism is called even parity. That means we have D plus one bits sent from the sender to a receiver. And if the D bit has even ones, and you simply write zero at the parity bit. But if the D bit has a even, okay, if the, the first D bit has odd ones, okay, then you put one right here. So in total, those D plus one bits, they should contain even numbers of ones. That's this very simple uh, mechanism. So what? So uh, we call it even parity. Uh, that means when when the receiver receives such kind of one uh, D plus one uh, data and uh, parity bit, uh, the receiver only need to check. How many bits, how many ones in this D plus one bit? If it is an even number, then single parity bit check is passed. Okay? If it is if it, it if the receiver count counts um odd number of uh ones, and then there may they might something wrong with this uh transmission. Okay, some bit might flip it. Okay, but uh, as you know, it's a very simple um, mechanism. So we can only de detect um, there is an error bit by using single bit parity, but we don't know which bit is incorrect, right? We don't know. And uh, of course, there are some other cons of uh, single bit parity. For example, if two bits, okay, um, has been flipped by by the noise by the noise uh, noise signal signal. Uh, you, you cannot check by using. You cannot check if it is uh, it has error. It, it does not has error by using single bit parity check, right? So uh, this is very simple and it can detect one bit error, but we don't know which one it is. Okay, it's a very simple one. So um, later we have a more complex. Uh, bit parity checking by using two dimensional bit parity. Okay, if you have a uh, data you need to transfer, okay, then you can write it into a two dimensional way. For example, it is a I times J bit you would like to transfer. Okay, and it's very simple. Um, you simply just do single bit parity for each rows right here. So we'll calculate the single bit parity right here and right here and right here. And then you calculate single bit parity by using each columns right here. And at last you calculate another single parity bit by using the Last rows and last row and last column. Okay, so uh, in this case we have i times j bits, and we have an additional j single parity bit and i single parity bit and one additional last single parity bit. So in total you have to send i times j. Okay, that is the original d right plus i. And j plus one that is the uh, bit parity. Okay, you need to send all those bit bits to your destination, and uh, at the destination you have to check if all of the single bit parity is correct. They are uh, if they are all even parity. Okay, I have to check that. So uh, let's take a look at this one. Um, it is one of the example that. Uh, uh, make sure you 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 
that this is zero. It should be zero, okay? This 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 digit should be zero, okay? And you can see that um, this row, okay, that is even, right? That is even. That is even. We have four ones. We have two ones. Two ones. Two two ones. So we have uh, four ones, four ones, and the four ones, and uh, two ones. So in this case, it has no errors. But in this case, we can know that this pair, this row has parity error, and this column has parity error. So we know this specific position is the bit that caused error. So you simply just flip this zero to one, and then you get the the the, the original uh, data. So that is how you do correction by using two-dimensional um, bit parity. I think this is very uh, simple and elegant design. But uh, you have to think about one thing. Uh, for this i times j bit, you need to send additional i plus j plus 1 bit in order to correct one single bit error. So it depends on um, the, the it, it depends on the uh, design of decentralized real of the there to uh, protocol. Um, it, it, is it worthy to do so or it is not? So uh, it depends on the design of the there to protocol. Okay, so that is very simple: a single bit parity and two dimensional bit parity. Okay, that's one of the way to do uh, error detection and error correction. And right here we have a, we have another one called CRC Silic. Redundancy check. There's another algorithm to do uh, error uh, detection. Okay, that's more powerful than uh, checksum. Okay, so think about one thing. We have a capital D, which is the data we like to send, and its size is d bits. Okay, that is d bit, and we like to uh, send another value called r, capital R, and its size is r bits. Okay, that is the uh, the uh, the data and the uh, the the arrow uh, the EDC. Okay, right here the EDC would like to send, and um, think about one mathematics things right here. Okay, um, when you, when you concate two decimal number, for example, one hundred twenty three and uh, forty five, if you concate these two numbers decimal numbers together, okay, uh, it should be 12,345, right? But how did you calculate this value? Because it has two digit, two decimal digit right here. So basically, the, the, the number should be 123 times 10 squared, because we have two digit right here, and plus 45. That is how you concate to, um, how, how do you calculate to concatenated decimal number. And right here, I would like to show you is that um, if you concate two binary number, okay, one, one of them is D, capital D, the other is capital R. If you concate two binary numbers right here, the what, what is the exact value of this binary number? It should be D, right? D times D times two, because currently we use binary format. So the, uh, the the number right here is two. If you use decimal number, and your base is ten, okay. Since the capital R has R bits, so this right here R bit, okay. Inclusive or right here is simply just addition. To perform the addition, simply just write like this one, okay? And you plus R right here. So if you concatenate two binary number D and R, and the actual value of this bigger binary number, it should be D times two R power R, and inclusive R that means addition, add, add R. Okay, make sure you understand this thing. Okay, and I will show you how um, 
cyclic redundant check CRC is calculated. Okay. Right now we have a data right here. Okay. One to be transfer. Okay. And then we calculate the CRC value of D. Okay. And uh, in this case, uh, the D is one zero one 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 zero. Okay. And it should be D bit. And in, in this specific example, it, the number, the length of this bit is six. Okay. And in CRC, we have to predefine what is the R bit. Okay. And in this case, okay, in this example, the R bit is three. Okay. The R bit is three. Uh, before the sending node and the receiving node try to uh, uh, ca calculate the CRC value, they have to predefine this value, okay? How long is the R bit, okay? And after that, we have another value is capital G. The length of capital G is R plus 1. So if R is 3 bit and then G is 4 bit, okay? Those are pretty fine things, okay? And you, you have to check a book, okay? To, ch to find out the G value if it is 4 bit, okay? So in this, in this example, the sending node and the receiving node, they all know the G has 4 bit and it is 1, 0, 0, 1, okay? So how do we calculate the CRC value, okay? First, you put your capital D right here and you append R bits of zeros at the end of D okay and then you start to use the D with three additional zeros padding zeros okay to calculate D divided by G okay that is how it works okay take a look at this one um, the first one is one, right? So you write down one zero zero one right here. Okay? To do such kind of uh, division, you need to subtract this four value, right? But it's very difficult to do so. So right here, we simply just do, uh, the, the computation is e equivalent to inclusive or. Okay? So one exclusive or one, that is zero. Zero exclusive zero, that is zero. One exclusive zero, that is one. One exclusive or one, and that is zero. So that is how this number is compute. Okay, now we have only two digits right here. So we put this one down here, okay? and zero right here and put this zero down here okay and then next step put one here so one zero zero one so again we need to do inclusive or okay one and one inclusive or the value is zero zero inclusive or zero that is zero one inclusive or zero that is one zero exclusive or one that is zero right and again we have only two digits right here but we need four digits so we put one right here and another one right here again then put one here uh one zero zero one okay and do again do exclusive or result is g or one zero okay the last step is right here we put this zero down to here and one one zero zero one so that is the result should be zero zero one one but um according to the uh the the calculation of such kind of uh, division okay um because we have four digit in G, so the remainder right here, so you know the R stands for remainder. The Re remainder should have, sorry, uh, the remainder should have three digit, three bits, because G has four digit. So R should 
or say must have 30 digit. So in this case, um, the R we compute right here is 0, 1, 1. So uh, at the end, when you like to do such kind of a CRC, CRC uh, computation, you simply put the original data right here, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and the computed R, which is 0, 1, 1 here. So you send this 9 bit to your destination. So after the, uh, the receiving node receives such kind, of, such kind of information, the receiver side will do D. We'll, we'll, we'll use this number, okay, use this number to divide by capital G, to divide by capital G, okay? If the result is zero, okay, if the result is zero, the result is zero that means um, the answer right here is uh, n times capital G, okay, or, or that means if you do such kind of uh, division, the remainder should be zero because you add the remainder right here, right? So D, at D times two R, uh, power R, inclusive R, this number, okay? You divide this number by G, the result should be zero. And that is that is one of the way that the receiver can check the D and R are correctly transferred, transmitted in, in a link. Okay, because this mechanism is a little bit a little bit complex than uh, checksum. Because check in checksum we only use uh, uh, addition to to calculate the checksum, but right here we use division, right? Use division to to calculate checksum. So uh, it's it's much more uh, complex and uh, reliable. To do to do such kind of CLC checking, okay. Make sure you um, you you do it once by 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 yourself, okay. Okay, we we'll stop right here and we we'll talk about uh, some other um, concept like next hour.